Well, I've got three things that Brother Jeremy had said that I'm just going to rehearse, and then I'm going to try and put these things together and make an exhortation. He started off by highlighting the point that when Paul addressed the people, he said, to all that be in Rome, and he said that this is a kingdom way of speaking. Now, now some might think that this seems a little bit inaccurate because he wasn't speaking to everybody in Rome, but really that's not the point. He really was speaking to everybody he intended to speak to. Everybody that is all, as Brother Jeremy already said, are those that are in Christ Jesus. Everybody outside of Christ counts as zero. So to say all is not to exaggerate by any means because they're the only ones that are truly acknowledged, and he went on to say that. I'm thankful that when Paul opens all these letters, he always addresses the people of God for who they are and reaffirms that. Within the context of affirming who Christ is concerning his son and him being made of the seed of David and all these things that the prophets, he was highlighting the things that prophets declared about him. But who we are is directly connected with who Christ is and what he has done. So this is masterful to tell the people of God who they are. So I'm thankful for that. Another thing is that uh, Brother Jeremy had said is Romans is a book of foundations. And I've seen this to be the case. When I was in college, they didn't teach Romans to the freshmen. They taught it to the seniors. I thought, well, this doesn't seem to make sense at all because this is a book of foundations. <laughs> and uh, but some of the great foundations that are in the book of Romans, like the depravity of humanity and the necessity of righteousness, the first three chapters, critical. Men will never come to God unless they know they can't be saved on their own. And so he lays this out of a witness given to the Gentiles, a witness given to the Jews, and in spite of that, they didn't come and they weren't saved. And in the third chapter, he reveals that righteousness. And in the fourth chapter, justification, an important foundation. In the fifth chapter, that all men are cursed through one man and that all men are blessed through one man. And in the sixth chapter, baptism and the things that happen as a result of that. And in the seventh chapter, the war that we have, the inner conflict, which is an important thing to see. And in the eighth chapter, spiritual life and not being condemned. And on and on he goes. But the interesting thing is that all those foundations are all tied back to something Jesus has done. If a righteousness has been revealed, it's because Jesus has atoned for sin. If we are justified, it's because God, because Jesus has died to make God both just and justifier. If we reign in life, as said in the fifth chapter, it is because Jesus has committed that one act of obedience, enabling us to receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And if we are alive unto God, as he declares in the sixth chapter, it is because Jesus has both died, buried, and raised. See, so he ties those things back to the work of Jesus Christ, and I'm thankful for that. Now, another thing that, that he said is when we see Christ clearly, we are able to grow. Paul said, we preach Christ. Back to the Colossians, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Say, so what does he mean? We never depart from this. We never do. Paul never did leave the subject of Christ. He didn't. And if he addressed other matters, it's because those were obstacles to people seeing Christ. And he would address them and get right back to Christ. And so this is what we do. Now, I want to just tie all these, all these things together. And I want to do it this way. Is that all those foundational things that are in Romans, and I anticipate, I'm looking forward to this. Because we don't leave the foundations in the sense of never talking about them again. We enlarge on our view of them. So I anticipate that. But those all are within the context of seeing what Christ has done. And I know that's going to come out in what Jeremy, Jeremy preaches. And in laying those foundations, we again see who we are as a result. If he's justified, then we are the justified. And on and on we could go. And as we see him clearly, we're able to grow. Now when... Uh, I like this. Uh, Brother Mike brought this out in his last sermon. When the Jews came to the breadth of the land of Canaan, you remember some just failed for fear. There's no way we can do this. And yet Caleb stands up and was, is fully assured and confident that he could do this. And in a masterful stroke, 
Brother Mike begins to lay the testimony for his confidence. You know, isn't this the one that delivered us from Egypt? When we were in the, in the wilderness, isn't he the one that, that the waters gushed out of the rock and he gave us? And isn't he the one that delivered us from the serpents? And isn't he the one that, and he went on and on. What was the difference between the two? Caleb remembered what God did and the others didn't. Now, that's what the proclamation of the gospel is all about. All of us want to run the race to the end, don't we? Want to make it to the end. Amen. How did we do that? By once again continually reaffirming yeah. what God has done in Christ Jesus. So I anticipate very greatly what this, what this book and this series will produce for us because it is so critical to continually reaffirm these great truths maybe today your confidence is at a high level maybe tomorrow it won't be yeah. we don't know where it will be but either way we always need to see once again what what god has done in christ jesus and in doing so we help all of us to be able to make it home safely so now i open it brethren for your for your comments this morning